A very good evening everyone. I hope you all are doing good and preparing well for the upcoming RBI exam that is on 28th. This is Kulapsa, your mentor, and I welcome you all to the session called RBI 247. In today's session, we'll cover important finance-related current affairs through quizzes and we'll also discuss certain key concepts related to finance. But before moving forward, there are some piece of information for you guys. The first is that we have launched a special series known as the Descriptive Writing Course. This will help you write better answers in Phase 2 of RBI Grade B exam. The series consists of 10 tests each for all the three sections, that is the English Descriptive, ESI as well as Finance and Management. Right now, it is available at 50% discount. You can use the code given over here to avail the benefit. Moving forward, you can also download our app from the Google Play Store to get one-stop solution to any exam-related updates, live video sessions, daily quizzes, topper strategies and all of these. So you can download it from the Google Play Store. Moving forward, so the first question on the screen says, Recently, SEBI, in exercise of its power under Section 5.1 of Securities Contracts Regulation Act 1956, has withdrawn the permanent recognition granted to which of the following stock exchanges? So, if you are following the news, you must have heard that SEBI has recently withdrawn the permanent recognition status that has been given to one of the following stock exchanges. And to give a hint, this stock exchange to which the withdrawal of the permanent recognition has been done is a commodity exchange. This is a commodity exchange. Hai. So if you are following the news, the correct answer to this question is C. Indian Commodity Exchange. Hai, Indian Commodity Exchange ko SEBI ne permanent recognition do, jo diya gaya tha in hai, 2015 mein usko withdraw kar diya hai. Moving forward to the news. Same under its power under Section 5.1 of the Securities Contract Regulation Act 1956, SEBI has withdrawn the permanent recognition status which was granted to Indian Commodities Exchange in the year 2015. 2015 may it was granted deemed stock exchange status. Deemed stock exchange status in 2009, October 2009, the government of India gave the permanent status gave the permanent status under forward contracts to ICEX ठीक है 2009 में government gave the permanent status under forward contract. However, in 2015, ICEX was brought under the embed of SEBI and thereby it was given the status of deemed stock exchange. So, the status unko diya gaya tha, it has now been finally removed of the permanent recognition status. Moving forward. Why has SEBI done so? This is because an order was passed by Shri V.S. Sundaresan. Okay? He is the executive director of SEBI. He passed an order stating that the company, the ICEX, the exchange has been non-complying with the following provision, with the following norms of the securities contract regulation, stock exchanges and clearing corporation regulation of 2018. So in order to give effect to the if to the order passed by Shri V. S. Sundaresan, SEBI has withdrawn the permanent status which is which was granted to ICEX. So what was the non-compliance? Non-compliance with the net worth requirement. As of today, any exchange, any exchange is required to have at least 100 crores 100 crores as net worth unke paas 100 crores of net worth hona chahiye any day theek hai however in case of icex icex ke case mein the net worth was around 93 crores theek hai and it has been deteriorating ye aur zyada reduced hoke 84 crores ke aas paas pahunch chuka hai in 2013 as well, in, th in 2013 as well, the ICEX suspended its trading operation. Unho ne apni trading ban kar di thi, jo unko re renew karne mein teen saal lag gaye the. 
the same has been happening now they have been there have been non compliance with the net worth requirement as well as with the sebi circulars and the infrastructural requirement which are required under the securities contract regulation of 2018 as well as based on the inspection and observation of sebi it has been decided to withdraw the permanent recognition which was given to icex theek hai i hope the reason of withdrawal is clear to all of you moving forward ab after the withdrawal what is the story theek hai to after the withdrawal sebi has asked icex to transfer the money any money that is available in the in investor protection fund and investor services fund of icex to sebi's in investor protection and education fund to so every exchange has an investor protection fund theek hai ek ipf hota hai har exchange ke paas plus unke paas ek investor services fund bhi hota hai theek hai investor protection as the name suggests ye fund ko utilize kiya jayega in order to streamline in order to streamline the protection of the investor in order to strengthen and streamline the investor protection to uske liye fund prepare kiya jata hai banaya jata hai similarly in order to provide services investor services fund bhi banaya jata hai to in case of any de recognition kabhi bhi kisi uh, de recognition theek hai recognition de recognition so in case if any exchange is de recognized then such exchanges are required to transfer the money in the ipf plus in the isf investor protection fund plus investor services fund to transfer this money to sebi's investor protection and education fund ipef mein transfer karna hota hai whenever a stock exchange or any exchange is de recognized or the permanent status is withdrawn theek hai uske alawa the icex or icex is also required to provide sufficient funds in order to settle any claims and pay the outstanding dues to sebi as well as pay the sebi registration fees as per sebi stock brokers regulation act of 1992 iske alawa sebi has also refrained icex to use the expression stock exchange in its name icex indian commodity exchange can now not use the term stock exchange or any variant of it in its name or in its subsidiary company's name theek hai i hope after the withdrawal the process is clear to you moving forward let us understand what this ipef is all about ipef stands for investor protection and education fund this was created in order to strengthen the activity for investor protection and this was created under the regulation sebi investor protection and education fund regulation of 2009 is regulation ke andar ipef ko create kiya gaya tha so as to strengthen investor protection activities ab koi fund create kiya jata hai then there are two purposes certain amounts will be added to it right certain amounts will be credited taki this so that this credited amount can be utilized for the purposes for which the fund has been created so what what all amounts will be credited to this fund so any contribution made by sebi to the fund or any grants and donations which is received by the central or the state government or any other entity that is approved by sebi as well as any security deposit in respect of public issues and rights issue which is kept with sebi theek hai and why is this security deposit kept ki in case it is not de recognized isliye kuch security deposit rakha jata hai held by the stock exchanges kabhi bhi jab bhi koi public issue ya rights issue hota hai certain security deposits is being kept by sebi and this security deposits is kept under the ipef fund i hope this is cleared any security deposits in respect of public issue or in respect of rights issue are kept under the ipef fund of sebi theek hai iske alawa in case of de recognition such as in the case of icex any amount in the ipf that is the investor protection fund plus any amount in the investor services fund needs to be credited to the ipef investor protection and education fund of sebi i hope this is clear to you 
मूविंग फॉरवर्ड कि इस फंड को हम कैसे यूटिलाइज कर सकते हैं सो द फंड द फंड कैन बी यूटिलाइज फॉर द फॉलोइंग पर्पसेस फर्स्ट इज फॉर द एजुकेशनल एक्टिविटीज इंक्लूडिंग सेमिनार ट्रेनिंग रिसर्च पब्लिकेशन विच इज एम्ड फॉर द इन्वेस्टर्स एनी अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम any funding any funding of investor education and awareness program through the activities of investors associations which are recognized by sebi as well as and in case in case of uh, in case of any undertaking of legal proceedings funds from ipf can be utilized to aid investors association which are recognized recognized investors association in order to undertake any legal proceeding which are in the interest of the investors in the securities that are listed or proposed to be listed as well as any refund of the security deposit to jab bhi public issue hoti hai ipo hota hai ya fir rights issue hota hai security deposits is kept hai na is kept in ipef now this security deposit once the ipo is done once the rights is done will have to be refunded back hai na to any refund of the security deposits will be utilized from the amount in the ipf now moving forward to understanding what icex was so icex that is indian commodity exchange limited is a sebi regulated online commodity derivative exchange ye commodity derivative exchange tha jo commodity mein deal karta tha and it helped and it provided a platform it provided a trading platform for commodity trading in india its its headquarter was in mumbai and as i have mentioned with effect from september 28 2014 it was recognized as a deemed stock exchange under the securities contract regulation act of 1956 also icex was the one to launch the world's first diamond derivative contract in august 2018 as well as in 2019 as well icex launched paddy basmati derivative contract so these are indigenous to icex it has launched the world's first diamond derivative contract as well as it was the one to launch paddy basmati derivative market uh, paddy basmati derivative contract in india now moving forward to the next question so based on the concept of commodity derivative market the question says who regulates the commodity derivatives market in india so an intelligent guess would be sebi of course because sebi looks up after the uh, exchanges in india right it is known as the market regulator sebi is also known as the market regulator theek hai to intelligent guess to yahi hota however i have taken this question just because in 2015 from 2015 onwards from 2015 onwards when icex was brought was brought under the ambit of sebi the commodity derivative market is regulated by sebi prior to 2015 prior to 2015 it was regulated by the forwards markets commission and this forwards market commission comes under the under ministry of consumer affairs theek hai so under the ministry of consumer affairs forward markets commission was the one who was regulating the commodity market in india however from 2015 onwards sebi has been regulating the commodity market moving forward let us understand a little bit about the commodity derivative market so first of all what is a derivative market as we all know what is a derivative derivative of something which does not has any intrinsic value of its own is khud ki koi value nahi hoti theek hai इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू का मतलब इसकी खुद की कोई वैल्यू नहीं है इट डिराइव द वैल्यू फ्रॉम एन अंडरलाइंग एसेट किसी एसेट के बेस्ड पे इसकी वैल्यू को डिराइव किया जाता है सो एनी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वट इज अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इट इज इट इज अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एनी ट्रेड बिटवीन टू पर्सन एनी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बिटवीन टू पर्सन ठीक है इन विच बेस्ड ऑन एन अंडरलाइंग एसेट एक अंडरलाइंग एसेट के ऊपर कोई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है this is known as a derivative contract and in case of a commodity derivative market as the name is very clear and it is a derivative market which has commodity as its underlying asset to jo underlying asset hai ye jo underlying asset hai wo ek commodity hai commodity pe commodity pe bet kiya ja raha hota hai as we all know derivative market mein kya hota hai for example there are two person a and b theek hai 
ना ये दो पर्सन दो ऑपोजिट बिलीव के होंगे बोथ ऑफ देम विल बी हैविंग एन ऑपोजिट बिलीव ऑपोजिट बिलीव होगा इफ यू टॉक अबाउट राइस ओनली अगर हम राइस की बात करते हैं सपोज दिस टू आर दिस इज अ फार्मर ये एक फार्मर है एंड ही इज अ ट्रेडर अ बिजनेस मैन है ना अ बिजनेस मैन तो इनकेस द फार्मर बिलीव कि जो प्राइस है कमोडिटी की है ना वो इंक्रीज होएगी ठीक है इंक्रीज होएगी टू या डिक्रीज होगी इट विल डिक्रीज नाउ इट इज हंड्रेड करंट प्राइस इज हंड्रेड एंड द फार्म ऑफ बिलीव कि वो अब इट विल डिक्रीज इट विल डिक्रीज टू एटी इन फ्यूचर ठीक है ट्रेडर बिलीव कि नहीं यार अभी द मार्केट इज देयर फॉर राइस सो इन फ्यूचर हंड्रेड से वो वन ट्वेंटी हो जाएगा ठीक है so they both have different belief he believes that price will decrease and he believes that price will increase so when this when two persons of opposite belief come together and the asset is an underlying asset they are not betting on the rise they are betting on the price of the rise aisa nahi ki jab contract hoga to he rise isko dega ye hai na they are just betting on the rise on the price ki price pe bet kar rahe hain ki price increase hoga ki decrease hoga current price abhi 100 hai ठीक है एंड टू मंथ्स का कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इनके बीच में है ठीक है आफ्टर टू मंथ्स वंस द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विल बी एग्जीक्यूटेड राइस विल नॉट बी ट्रांसफर्ड ओनली द डिफरेंशियल विल बी ट्रांसफर्ड बिटवीन देम तो प्राइस पे बेट कर रहे हैं राइस की ठीक है इसलिए इसको डेरिवेटिव मार्केट बोला जाता है सो इन केस अब ये दो महीने के बाद इफ प्राइस इंक्रीजेस टू इफ प्राइस इंक्री इफ प्राइस हंड्रेड से एटी रह जाता है ठीक है सपोज इसकी जो प्रोडिक्शन है वह सही हो जाती है फार्मर की तो अभी उन्होंने एग्जीक्यूट किया था आज के दिन पे दैट फार्मर विल गिव राइस टू बी फॉर रुपीज हंड्रेड ठीक है ए विल बी गिविंग राइस टू बी एंड बी विल बी पेइंग रुपीज हंड्रेड टू हिम दो महीने बाद ना दो महीने के बाद प्राइस एट्टी हो जाती है ठीक है तो अब फार्मर क्या करेगा फार्मर विल है to purchase it for 120 वो मार्केट से परचेज करेगा हिस्स प्रोडिक्शन इज रॉन्ग तो इसके लिए लॉस हुआ अब लॉस कितना हुआ फार्मर विल परचेज द राइस फ्रॉम द मार्केट एट 120 120 में खरीद के वो ए को एक सौ रुपये में बेचेगा तो इसकी लॉस कितनी है 20 लॉस व्हाट इज द लॉस टू बी इट इज 20 एंड व्हाट इज द गेन टू ए गेन क्या है मार्केट प्राइस मार्केट प्राइस अगर वो अगर फार्मर मार्केट से जाके लेता तो उसको 120 का पड़ता बट सिंस ही ही अंडर ही द डेरिवेटिव कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अंडर विच इसकी प्रोडिक्शन सही हुई है एंड नाउ ही इज गेटिंग द राइस फॉर रुपीज हंड्रेड है ना नाउ ही इज गेटिंग फॉर हंड्रेड तो प्रॉफिट फॉर प्रॉफिट फॉर फार्मर प्रॉफिट कितना होगा फार्मर को इट विल बी ट्वेंटी सो ट्वेंटी इज द प्रॉफिट फॉर फार्मर एंड ट्वेंटी इज द लॉस फॉर माइनस ट्वेंटी इज द लॉस फॉर बी द ट्रेडर ठीक है दैट्स वाई इट इज ऑलवेज सेट द डेरिवेटिव इज अ जीरो सम गेम डेरिवेटिव को हमेशा जीरो सम गेम बोला जाता है वाई जीरो सम गेम बिकॉज द प्रॉफिट ऑफ वन विल बी इक्वल टू द लॉस ऑफ द अदर दैट्स वाई इट इज अ जीरो सम गेम प्लस ट्वेंटी माइनस ट्वेंटी द रिजल्ट इज जीरो दैट्स वाई इट इज नॉन एज अ as zero sum game derivative markets are known as zero sum game i hope this is clear to you now talking about the types of commodities market so as the name is clear what is a commodity market it is a derivative market in which the underlying asset is a commodity now what all types of commodities are traded in india's commodity derivative market so basically there are two broad categories first is agricultural commodity and the second is non agricultural commodity agricultural commodities kya kya hongi commodities such as cotton guar seed maize oil so anything that is any agri product right any agri product and any processed agri product generally any agri product or any processed agri products comes under agricultural commodity non agricultural commodity consist of natural resources that are mined or processed such as crude oil gold silver now gold and silver are precious metals right these are precious metals zinc this is non precious metal 
ठीक है तो नॉन एग्रीकल्चरल कमोडिटी में नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज आते हैं प्रेशियस मेटल्स आता है और नॉन प्रेशियस मेटल्स आता है आई होप दिस इज क्लियर एग्री एंड नॉन एग्री टाइप ऑफ कमोडिटीज आर ट्रेडेड अंडर द कमोडिटी डेरिवेटिव मार्केट मूविंग फॉरवर्ड हु इज द रेगुलेटर ऑफ कमोडिटी डेरिवेटिव मार्केट इन इंडिया सिंस सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी एट थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन सेबी इज द रेगुलेटर Prior to that, it was regulated by Forward Markets Commission under Ministry of Consumer Affairs. Ministry of Consumer Affairs. Now, what all types of contracts are allowed in commodity derivatives market? Derivative markets में तीन तरीके की होती हैं. Forward market होता है, futures होते हैं और options होता है. And there is one more known as the swaps. है ना? But in case of commodity derivatives market, only futures which is standardized. standardized futures as well as options are uh, are the contracts which are allowed in the commodity derivative market moving forward what is the benefit of a commodity derivative market it helps it helps in the discovery of prices as well as in order to mitigate the price risk any risk as we all know the the utility of a derivative market so if a market is established there must be some utility so in case of a derivative market the utility is two things first first is to mitigate the risk risk management risk management and second is speculation in do cheezon ke liye derivative market ko form kiya gaya tha to in case of the uh, commodity derivative market it helps the it helps in a nation it provides a nation wide platform for the discovery of the prices of the commodity hai na it helps in the discovery of the prices and also it helps in mitigating and reducing the price risk any type of price risk ye example jo humne abhi dekha the example which we have seen right now usme bhi we have talked about the price risk ki farmer ko lag raha tha ki price इंक्रीज होएगा और उसको लग रहा था कि डिक्रीज होएगा है ना तो उस चीज को मिटिगेट uh, करने के लिए उसको हेज करने के लिए कमोडिटी डेरिवेटिव मार्केट्स आर यूज इन इंडिया ठीक है अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इट आल्सो प्रोवाइड्स एन इनवैल्यूएबल टूल टू वेरियस वैल्यू चेन पार्टिसिपेंट्स देर वेरियस पार्टिसिपेंट लाइक लाइक द स्मॉल प्रोड्यूसर्स दूसर्स इन ऑर्डर टू हैज द प्राइस रिस्क गेट एडवांस प्राइस सिग्नल्स की इन फ्यूचर वट विल बी द ट्रेंड ऑफ द प्राइसिस है ना तो इनको एडवांस प्राइस सिग्नल्स मिल जाता है कमोडिटी की एंड बेस्ड ऑन दिस दे आर एबल टू टेक इनफॉर्म्ड डिसीजन ऑन द पैटर्न ऑफ क्रॉपिंग द टाइमिंग ऑफ सेल्स एक्सेट्रा सो दिस आर द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ कमोडिटी डेरिवेटिव्स मार्केट इन इंडिया मूविंग फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो रिसेंटली आर बी आई हैज सेट द लिमिट हैज प्रोवाइडेड द क्रेडिट लिमिट दैट अ कमर्शियल बैंक कैन लेंड टू एन बी एफ सी फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ ऑन लेंडिंग related to priority sector lending as well as for the small finance bank to the nbfc mfi microfinance institution to unki limit ko rakha gaya hai based on that the question in front of you states the maximum credit that a commercial bank can lend to nbfc for the purpose of on lending to priority sector is allowed up to an overall limit of dash of an individual bank's total priority sector lending ठीक है द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन विल बी नाउ इन केस इट टॉक्स अबाउट कमर्शियल बैंक कमर्शियल बैंक के केस में द आंसर विल बी ए फाइव परसेंट न्यूज देख लेते हैं न्यूज क्या कहता है सो आर बी आई हैज डिसाइडेड आर बी आई डिसाइडेड टू अलाउ कमर्शियल बैंक एस वेल एज द स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक टू लेंड टू प्रोवाइड लोन्स टू एन बी एफ सीज कमर्शियल बैंक विल प्रोवाइड लोन्स टू एन बी एफ सीज एंड स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक विल प्रोवाइड लोन्स टू एन बी एफ सी माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ ऑन लेंडिंग टू प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर अब जो कमर्शियल बैंक हैं या फिर स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक हैं ये अपने पास इनके पास एक लिमिट है फॉर एग्जाम्पल से ट्वेंटी परसेंट इनके पास लिमिट है कि जो भी इनके पास पैसा आएगा ट्वेंटी परसेंट हैज टू बी गिव हैज टू बी लोन टू प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लैंडिंग सेक्टर्स है ना प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर में इनको लैंड करना है नाउ अब ये जो कमर्शियल बैंक या स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक है ये इस पी एस एल के इस जो ट्वेंटी परसेंट है इसके कुछ परसेंटेज को लोन करेंगे टू टू एन बी एफ सी इन केस ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक एंड एन बी एफ सी माइक्रो फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूज दी हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज ठीक है तो इनको लोन करेंगे सो दैट दे अंडरटेक द ऑन लैंडिंग दे अंडरटेक द ऑन लैंडिंग टू प्रायोरिटी 
सेक्टर्स ठीक है इसका कुछ परसेंटेज कमर्शियल बैंक एन या एन बी को लेंड करेगा सो so दैट वो आगे लेंड कर सके प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर को ठीक है तो ये फैसिलिटी ये क्रेडिट फैसिलिटी थी इट वॉज प्रोवाइडेड इट वॉज अर्लियर अलाउड टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू हाउ एवर टू इन हाउ एवर आर बी आई सो दिन एन बी एफ सी इन डिलीवरिंग द क्रेडिट टू द स्पेसिफाइड प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर एंड आर बी आई वॉन्स दैट द सनर्जी विच हैज बिन क्रिएटेड ऑल द वाइल्ड शुड बी कंटिन्यूड और इसको कंटिन्यू करने के लिए आर बी आई हैज डिसाइडेड टू अलाउ द अब क्रेडिट फैसिलिटी to the banks to the to the banks to the nbfc as well as the nbfc microfinance institution on an ongoing basis ye facility march 31st 2022 tak applicable tha but seeing this synergy and in order to continue this synergy that has been developed between the bank and the nbfc in delivering credit to the priority sector rbi has decided that such facility should be should be allowed on an ongoing basis so what is the maximum credit limit so in case of commercial banks i have mentioned it is 5% of an individual bank's total priority sector lending agar uski 20% hai to uska 5% suppose this is equal to 100 100 crores commercial bank ke paas 100 crores hain theek hai 500 crores iska net worth hai ya total loan amount hai jiska 20% psl mein jana hai is 20% which is equal to 100 crores is ka 5% it can lend to nbfcs including the housing finance companies so that they can lend to the priority sectors the 100 ka 5% kitna hoga 5 crores theek hai now in the case of small finance banks small finance banks can can allow can lend the credit to nbfc microfinance institutions as well as other mfis that is societies or trusts which are recognized by rbi under self regulatory organization and small finance banks are allowed to to lend up to an overall limit of 10% of its total priority sector lending theek hai in case of commercial banks it is 5% ye limit aapko yaad rakhna padega aur ye rbi ke website pe aayi thi theek hai to 5% in case of commercial banks and in case of small finance banks it is 10% theek hai or for the purpose of on, on lending small finance banks are allowed to lend to the registered mfis and other mfis ab kisko ye lend kar sakta hai first they have to be recognized they have to be recognized by rbi theek hai they have to be recognized by rbi under the self regulatory organization second they should have a gross loan portfolio up to rupees 500 crore as of 31st march 2022 unke paas jo gross लोन पोर्टफोलियो जितना उन्होंने लोन दिया है इट शुड बी इट शुड बी अप टू रुपीज फाइव हंड्रेड करोड़ तो इनके जिनके पास पांच सौ या उससे लेस होगा वो प्लस एनी एनी एम एफ आई दैट इज रिकोगनाइज बाई आर बी आई अंडर द सेल्फ रेगुलेटरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सच विल बी अलाउड टू सच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओनली स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक कैन लेंड अप टू टेन परसेंट ऑफ इट्स प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लेंडिंग ठीक है और ये जो लिमिट कैलकुलेट की गई है इट शुड बी कंप्यूटेड बाय एवरेजिंग द फोर क्वार्टर्स ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल ईयर इन ऑर्डर टू डिटरमाइन द एडहेरेंस टू द प्रेस्क्राइब कैप आई होप दिस इज क्लियर बेस्ड ऑन दिस द अदर क्वेश्चन ऑन द स्क्रीन स्टेट्स द मैक्सिमम क्रेडिट दैट अ स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक कैन लेंड टू एन बी एफ सी एम एफ आईज फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ ऑन लेंडिंग टू प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर इज अलाउड अप टू एन ओवरऑल लिमिट ऑफ वॉट इज द आंसर द आंसर इज 10% in case of small finance bank it is 10% of an individual banks of an individual small finance bank total priority sector lending so the correct answer is c 10% i hope this is clear i hope both the news was clear to you theek hai yahan pe bhi mention hai ki 10% hona chahiye answer is c so i hope this was clear to you in case if you need a free pdf of today's session you can download it by joining our telegram group all free pdfs as well as any information about the regular classes which are held on youtube are provided on the telegram group itself so i hope you like the session in case of any doubt you can write it down in the comment section thank you take care and bye bye